This week we're painting 40k's equivalent of Doc Ock and the Tech Marine's evil twin brother. It's the Chaos Warpsmith. Welcome to the Painting Coach. To start off, I have primed this miniature with Lead Belcher. Now, any sane person will have left the backpack off. However, I was tainted by Chaos, so I glued the whole thing together, making it slightly more difficult. But essentially, this is what we're starting for. Without any further ado, let's get into the paint job. So the first thing we need to do is paint all of the armour. We're going to go for a dark red Kind of the opposite of what the tech marine is so to do this we're starting with corn red next up we're going to do some of the brassy gold details now there's a fair few bits around the model so just work your way around take your time the color we're going to use for this is balthazar gold and make sure you've got a nice even coverage on all these parts we're going to shade all of the model at the same time now so if you need to go back and fix anything now is the time Take some null oil and paint this over the entirety of the model. Make sure it doesn't pool too much. You just want to use it to darken all of the elements. When that null oil is dry, we can start to build up some of the other colours. So firstly, we're going to use a bad and black. We're going to use this to paint all of the trim, all of the rubber piping, as well as any leather that we've got on the item. So take your time with this and just work it in quietly. You don't want to go too mad or have too much on your brush. The first highlight we'll do is with a dry brush of lead belcher. Now we don't want to use a big dry brush and we don't want to be too hard with this because we're going to be dry brushing fairly delicate parts. So just get a little bit on your brush, wipe it off and then just gently move your brush along those raised parts of silver. The final highlight we'll do with the silver metallic is going to be with chrome from Valeo Model Air. And what we're looking to do with this is catch those sharpest edges and just use the side of the brush where we can to get a really nice smooth highlight. We'll do the same using Sycorax Bronze now to highlight those gold areas. Now take your time with this and again just use the shape of the brush to get nice clean highlights. We'll move on to the black next and there are two types of black material on the model. We've got the hard armour trim and we've also got the softer more rubbery and leather elements. So firstly we'll focus on the softer elements such as the tubing, the leather and also the grip on the weapon. So the colour we're going to use for this is Skaven Blight Dinge. Staying with those softer black elements, we'll add a final highlight using Storm Vermin Fur. Now we're going to use this fairly lightly and only in specific areas just to give the impression of more light hitting that part. Moving on to the harder black areas now, such as those parts of the armour, and we're going to use Mechanicus Standard Grey. Where we can, we're going to use the tip of the brush and the shape of the model to get a nice fine highlight. But where we can't use this, we're just going to take our time and make sure we've got a good point on our brush and make sure the paint is flowing nicely so that we get a good quality edge highlight to make those harder black surfaces pop just a little bit more we're going to take some administratum gray we're going to use this fairly sparingly again in a very similar fashion to how we did the mechanica standard gray using the tip of the brush and making sure we haven't got too much point and just dotting it around where we're going to get the most reflection next up we'll cover off some of the bone areas on the model and we'll also base the face ready for when we do that in the next stage Take some Rakar flesh and use this to base all the bone areas, any tooth style spikes you can find, as well as that bare head. To shade all the bone areas, we're gonna take some Skeleton Horde to contrast paint and just make sure we don't let it pool too heavily in the recesses. Once that's dry, we'll highlight all of that bone using Screaming Skull. Again, we don't want to have too much on the brush and we want a good point on the end of it as well so that we can get a nice sharp highlight. Moving on to the flesh on the face, or at least what's left of it, we want to just put some Magos purple all over this area. We're going to use this as the shade because it'll just simulate that really painful, raw looking skin that'll be associated with only having half a head. To highlight the face, first off, we'll go back to rack our flesh and use this to highlight all the sharp areas like the brow, the sides of the head and the top of the nose, as well as any frown lines. Then once we've done that, we'll take some Pallid Witch Flesh and cover the same sort of areas, but just with a much thinner highlight to make that pop a little. There are a couple of lit elements to do next, such as the plasma coil, as well as some buttons across the model. So the first thing we're going to do is paint all of these with some white scar. We'll then use some contrast paint to get the effect we're looking for. So for the plasma coil, we're going to use Griffhound Orange. And for all the other light elements, such as the eyes on the model, we're going to use Blood Angel's Red Contrast Paint. You can, of course, use any colour you want. The last thing we need to do is that red armour. So firstly, take some corn red and use this to paint in those higher areas, the parts that face upwards, and just bring it back to life a little bit, leaving that null oil in the recesses. The first highlight is going to be with Mephiston red, and we're going to do this in two ways. Firstly, where we can, we're going to catch the edge of the model using the tip of the brush and the sharp edge. And where we can't do that and we need to paint it on the inside edge, we're just going to make sure we've got a really good point on the brush and take our time with nice smooth strokes. 
And the final highlight will be with Evil Sun Scarlet using exactly the same technique as before, but just making sure that we paint this inside the Mephiston Red. So it just gives us another layer of highlight and that will complete the darker red of this armor. And there you have it. This Warpsmith is complete and ready for the table. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a like and leave a comment. It really does help the channel. Check out some of my other content and I will see you next time.